Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. I am about to start some, some more seeds. I'm going to be starting some basil and poppies, zinnias, some other flowers. I don't really know what else yet, so we'll see. But I'm going to start some seeds and I thought this would be the perfect time to go over some really common mistakes with seed starting and how you can maybe tell that you're making some of them. So let us run away as fast as we can No looking back, I'll hold your hand cause we're free I'm going to show you some of my seed starts right now and how they're doing so you can see what some healthy starts look like, some starts that may not be so happy, and how I'm going to approach it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these starts. They're not all perfect. Overall, they're pretty good this year. So we have some peppers and eggplants and tomatillos in this tray right here. And then in the tray in front, we have some tomatoes, we have kale and cabbage. So these guys are nice, healthy seedlings. You can see in the middle especially, stalks are not tall and spindly. They're stout, they're strong, they're not discolored at all, they look good. But on the end here, on the outside, this one's a little leggy. I can tell because it just doesn't stand up on its own, falls over a little bit. And then next to them, you got a tomato that just started sprouting its true leaves, and it's a little leggy. These ones on the outside tend to be a little leggy because the lighting doesn't hit them as directly. But if you look in the middle here, these guys are much stronger, less leggy, they're healthier, they're looking, they're looking great. So with minor legginess, like you have going on here, I don't really worry too much about it. I haven't had plants with just a little legginess not produce for me. And with tomatoes especially, you can actually plant the tomato all the way to its first set of leaves, which gets rid of legginess altogether. So when you go ahead and repot the tomatoes, you can just plant them to the first set of leaves and then you solve the problem. So tomatoes are kind of the most ideal plant to have legginess issues in my experience. These peppers are just a couple weeks old. They've only germinated for a couple weeks and overall, they look pretty good. Their leaves are pretty dark green, look a little brighter in this camera. This is eggplant in here. They're doing good overall. But if you look at this, these tom uh, tomatillos, they're a little lighter than I'd like. I would ideally like them to see a little darker green. I think they're just getting a little too much water and they also need to be potted up. I mean, look how tall they are compared to the rest. Pretty soon I'm going to start hardening off my seedlings, which means taking them outside during the day. And when I start to do that, I will notice some changes in how they appear based upon how they're reacting to the outside temperature, the outside wind, things like that. They may start to look just a touch weaker at first. So I'll take it slow and then eventually they're gonna start to really love that sunlight and be really well adjusted by the time they go in the ground. Do something to say, Junior. No, 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 you cannot walk in my soil. Nope. Nope. Cats are such a nuisance, guys, such a nuisance. There's kind of like three main categories of mistakes, and we're gonna start with the first one, which is the one I see more often than anything else, and that is inadequate lighting. A lot of times you'll hear people start seeds by a window, a south facing window, and so you think, okay, I have plenty of south facing sunlight, I'll be fine, I don't need any lights, I don't need any greenhouse, I don't need anything like that, so let's go ahead and get started. Almost like 99% of the time, a south facing window is not going to provide you with enough lighting to start seeds. Instead, you pretty much always need some kind of grow light if you don't have access to a greenhouse. 
it doesn't have to be a fancy grow light although you're going to get the best results with an actual graded grow light but you can use a shop light that is adequate for seed starting so we have a specific type of shop light that has the right K value so I'm just gonna put down in the description the kind of lights that we use but they were about $20 for each shop light we have four wait one two we have five and that's what we use to start seeds and I will say there is moderate to low level of lightiness that we still observe with using these and that's because we only use one per level if we had two next to each other that would be fine but I do notice that the rows on the outside of the tray tend to have a little bit of legginess it's not enough of an issue though for us to change what we're doing but if you're very very concerned and you don't want any legginess at all in any of your plants then something to be a little bit aware of <clears throat> so lighting that's the first mistake and if you make this mistake you're going to see pretty poor results and feel really discouraged with how leggy your plants look, with how unhealthy they look, because plants really need a lot of light in order to grow strong, healthy stems and root systems and all of that stuff. The reason they get leggy is because they're trying really hard to reach to the light. And so if you don't have light near the plants, then they're just gonna keep growing tall to try to reach that light. And the taller they grow, the thinner they grow and they're not going to be able to be very strong when you want them to be. So you want adequate lighting and you want that lighting to be like really, really, really close to your seed trays when you start the seeds. You want those little sprouts to be like right next to the light, like an inch, sometimes even less, and then you're gonna be moving up the light as they get bigger. The next category of mistakes that I see people make all the time and I definitely made my first year as well as lighting. I definitely made all of these mistakes my first year. So the next one is soil issues, is planting seeds in dry soil and then watering. And the reason this is a problem is because dry soil has a lot of air gaps and you really can't decrease those air gaps without having your soil moist first. Also, if you just water on top, oftentimes the water will just sit and may evaporate before it even permeates through the seed trays that you're using. Because when soil is really dry, it's really hard for water to saturate the soil. So just start with some moistened soil. I have a video about how to start seeds and how to moisten your soil when you get started and a blog post about this too. You just want it to be like cake mix, brownie mix, that kind of consistency. You don't want it to be dry. You don't want it to feel dry at all. On that note, a lot of people don't realize what kind of soil to use when you're starting seeds. You want to use soil that's high quality with a lot of nutrients, has a lot of compost in it, because you're not going to need to fertilize anything when it's still in your house or um, when it's still in trays. It's, it should have plenty of nutrients from the soil that you're using. And the other factor that's really important with seed starting soil is you don't want it to be too clumpy or have like too many big pieces of um, twigs or big chunky bits of soil in it. You want it to be pretty smooth, pretty fine. So you're going to look for a very high quality organic potting mix or even better, an organic seed starting mix. My favorite is Coast of Maine. I use their organic potting mix for starting seeds and it's always worked really well for me. There are also a lot of other brands you can look into. I'll post some options for you in the description below. The next big mistake that a lot of people make when they're growing seeds, starting seeds, is overwatering their seedlings. Sometimes it seems like the fix for anything is just to water, and unfortunately that's not the case, and oftentimes your seedlings can give off a lot of signals that they're not doing well, because they're getting too much water, not because they're not getting enough. If you start to see um, pale yellow leaves, sometimes they can look really droopy if they're getting too much water. Unfortunately, the symptoms of too much water and not enough water can look really similar. So the best way to tell how you're watering is not to look at the plant always for an indication, but to just check the soil. Put your finger in the soil, in the tray, and see is it moist if it's completely dry go ahead and give it a water bottom watering pouring the water in the tray that the that the um, cells is in so if you can see like this tray right here 
I'm going to pour the water in the white part and then the, tr the cells will absorb water from the bottom. That way you don't have as many mold or fungal issues because the soil absorbs the water. On top of that, the other added bonus is that the roots will be encouraged to dig a little deeper. Last big mistake that a lot of people make is too little space when you're starting seeds. So if I'm using this tray right here, which the cells are tiny, there's 72 cells here, I'm going to either have to do one of two things. I'm either going to have to pot up everything I put in there really quick, or I'm going to have to plant everything in the ground really quick. Because there's really not a lot of room for roots to grow, and it's not enough soil for the plants to be healthy for any kind of long period of time. What will happen is you'll get very stunted growth in your plants, and when you go plant them outside, they'll take forever to grow, and they'll always be more miniature if they've been in something like this for too long. So, what you can do is use these 72 cells for things that you're just starting for a couple weeks indoors and you're gonna get them outside really quickly. Things like lettuces, flowers, um, basil. I'm using this for just some herbs and flowers that I'm going to plant in four weeks or less. So they really won't be in here for that long. Half the time they'll probably be germinating. So they'll be fine in here. And if I start to notice issues, I'll go ahead and either pop them up or put them in the ground. So here's how you can tell that you may have made some of these mistakes. The first one is leggy seedlings. Leggy seedlings often means the plants are not getting enough light. So you need to either readjust your lighting setup, maybe the light is too far away from the plants or you don't have adequate lighting. Worst case scenario, you have no access to good lighting, your plants are leggy and you have to start over. Another option, if you don't have good access to lighting, but the daytime temperatures are above freezing and fairly moderate, like in the high 40s, in the 50s, then just go ahead and bring your seedlings outside, adjusting them to more and more time outside so that they can get as much light as possible early on. Also, maybe you can just direct seed your seeds into the ground outside, depending on where you live, and then you don't have to worry about the lighting issue because they'll get plenty of light from the sun. Now, if you're seedlings are growing really slow, they look weak, and they don't really seem to be doing a whole lot. In my experience, one of the biggest problems is when you plant it in dry soil, and the soil is so filled with air pockets that there's really not a lot of nutrients going to those roots. You can take out your plant and you can pot it into a different pot with moistened soil, and oftentimes this will solve your problem. Too much watering, like I said, you'll start to see yellowing of leaves, you might see some droopy leaves, you might see stunted growth, some of those things will come up if you're watering too much. And if the plants have too little space, the biggest indicator is the root system. If you take the little plant out of the cell and the roots are all circling each other, that's how you know that you have too little space for the plants to grow. And you'll also see stunted growth at a certain point. They'll look really good at first and then all of a sudden they'll start to look weak, leaves will start to pale, and you'll realize, oh, you know what? They're root bound, which means the roots are just circling each other. So those are the biggest mistakes in my experience that new gardeners or new seed starters make, and some of the ways you can tell if you've made them. And if you have made them, don't worry. You can either start over, you can try to revive your plants. There are always gardeners selling seed starts. There are nurseries selling seed starts. There's, there is a way that you can garden in this year, even if your first attempt at seed starting didn't go so well. Another note is even if you've made all of these mistakes, your plants could still produce. My first year, my tomatoes looked awful. I did every mistake in the book, plus a number of mistakes I didn't even mention here. I think I used miracle Grow soil, not organic. I used peat pots. I didn't have grow lights, so I just had them by the window. They were leggy, they were underwatered, they were in dry soil they were weak, and they still produced. So, don't fret, you might not have the most abundant year in the world, but you still might experience a lot of delicious fruits and vegetables in your garden. So, I hope this is an encouragement and not a discouragement. I don't want you guys to feel frustrated if you've made some of these mistakes, I promise you, we all do. Um, I know somebody who's a very, very experienced master gardener and she still overwatered her starts this year. Um, I overwater or underwater all the time just because sometimes life gets busy and it's hard to take care of our seed starts the way we want to. 
Well friends, I hope this video was super helpful to you. I'm going to make sure my cat stays out of my seedlings. I'm gonna put them away and wrap up this video. Thanks for being here. If you're not a part of the plant studying family, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more videos on gardening, homesteading, just our life in general. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below the mistakes that you've made. I've mentioned I've made plenty and let's encourage each other to not stress about mistakes and just bounce back because we all make mistakes. So anyhow, you all know that. I'll see you guys later. Bye friends. Stopping us, but